What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So this week I have a client who waited almost like a year to come in and do some color. So when she originally came in to see me, um, she was requesting some gray blending, something so that she didn't have to cover up her grays too much. She doesn't have like a ton of gray, it's just a little bit of sparkle around the hairline. And a little bit about her color history was that she was doing base color before she had seen me and it was pretty much on her mids and ends and I let her know that if she wanted to go gray, it would honestly be best if she could grow it out and that's exactly what she did. So she ended up growing out all of her old color. In between that, we were definitely trimming up her hair um, so that we could do this full color transformation. And the color that she chose to do is pretty much a gray chunky money piece with a underlight. So right now I'm going in and just highlighting the underlight and I'm basically just doing slices back to back with no negative space. So by doing slices back to back with no negative space, this is going to create a very solid underneath, which is the underlight. Um, we opted to do a more solid underlight so that later she feels like she has a lot of color. And then it'll be really easy for me to retouch this when she comes in for touch ups. And the other thing that I wanted to note was I did ask her if she wanted the color all the way to the root. A lot of times clients um, who are generally naturally like levels five and below, they don't like to have the color all the way to the root. So we also opted to do foils this way so that we could stay off root and keep the bottom nice and solid. So as I'm picking out these slices to do the underlight part, I'm really making sure that my slices are super paper thin. This is going to give me the cleanest lift. Um, but because my slices are pretty thin, I am folding up that foil because I don't want these foils to slip at all. Um, so I have to keep in consideration that since there isn't so much hair in the foil, I do still need something to lock the foil in. So that's why I am folding these up opposed to just laying them on top of each other. But also because her hair is not super thick, I would say her hair texture is more on the medium to finer side. So that's another reason why I opted to fold my foils on this section here on the underneath, especially too, because the hairs are short. So um, if we had any kind of slippage or any of the foils that were just not locked in too tight um, as this processes, it can create like unevenness with the lift. So that's why um, those first few foils, I did fold those up. And then you can see as I'm gradually getting closer towards the top and the hair is getting a little bit longer here, I'm starting to lay the foil on because the hair above the hairline isn't as fine. So I felt like it would be able to stay in the foil, stay put with um, just laying a foil right on top. So I just determined that just depending on the density of the hair, the or the texture of the hair just really depends even the consistency of how thick my lightener is will also determine whether or not I fold up the foil or I just lay the foil right on top and just try to lock it in as tight as possible so the back here I'm pretty much gonna just finish up the underlight all the way up to the top of the ear and this is where I'm gonna connect that front and back so you can see I'm slicing the sides and this is normally how I would do um, like an underlight if a client is getting an underlight so I'm treating her hair color placement like I would a normal underlight but on top of just the normal underlight, we are going to be adding in a very chunkyish money piece because she did want to see color around her face in that way as well. So 
on the sides here when I do apply the liner um, I'm making sure that I'm putting a generous amount of liner on each of my foils and then my slices I try to get as wide of a slice that will fit into my foil comfortably um, I don't want the hair to be too close to the edge I usually will leave about an inch from the sides of the foil because it gives me wiggle room to fold my foil and then it also gives the lightener room to expand so like let's say I were to fill the foil with hair all the way to the edges I would have no room to fold my foils and then on top of that while the color was processing sometimes it does expand with heat or body heat or if there's minerals in the hair so if that ever did happen and um, I didn't have extra space in my foil to allow the expansion of the product sometimes it can create slippage bleed spots a lot of things so it's always good to leave a little bit of space on the sides of your foil for that reason just in case it the color does start to expand as it's processing so once i've reached the sides all the way up to the temples that's when i went in and started to do the front money piece here and before doing the money piece i asked her various questions as to figuring it how how thick she wanted it um, and I use a lot of photo references of my work to show her what would look good on her or my suggestions because sometimes a client will feel like oh I want just like a really tiny money piece but I'll show her because of the way that her hair grows and lays that she might need something a little bit thick thicker or chunkier so that she could see more of the color to achieve the look that she's actually going for so really the money piece just varies on the client and it's really good to just use photo references to determine how many slices to do. So now I am going in, you can see I've pulled out the foils. I am putting a towel there so that I could um, just kind of separate the hair and I'm meshing the lightener together before rinsing it completely out. I like to do this if I'm doing a solid color blocking bleach out because it really does help get it a little bit more even since the hair and there's heat against the scalp um, you can notice that sometimes the root will process a little bit quicker than the ends when doing this technique so this part really does help because i always have trouble with that that um, the root part will always process a little bit lighter than the ends so at this point I kind of squeegee off the product and then I just apply fresh lightener on the ends to kind of help it catch up to the root that has processed faster than the ends and the reason why that happens is because um, the root is closer to the head and the head does give off heat from just like natural body heat so some ways to kind of avoid that, the body heat situation, is to throw the ends into the dryer or apply heat, like manual heat to the ends. Um, but her hair was just so short, I couldn't really do that. I couldn't put her just her ends in the dryer. So um, sometimes I'll just put the dryer overall on top of the head, on like medium heat, just kind of mimic body heat. So it's not like boiling hot or a hot hot. It's like a medium hot to where it kind of um, gives an even distribution of heat throughout to kind of help it catch up. But even by doing that too, I always do find that I need to relighten the ends with something. Um, and generally when I do relighten the ends with any lightener, I like to use just like blonde me lightener with like 20 volume. And then once all of that was pretty much done processing, I had my assistant Jen just put on her toner really quick. And so for her toner, we mixed up Silver Violet Moonstone from the Pulperite Rapid Toners. We like to mix that with six volume and then we apply it to the root and then um, brush that through and apply to the mids and ends afterwards. And the processing time is pretty just visual. I like to check on it. And then once I start to see like the slightest hue of lavender is when I rinse it off. Alrighty guys, so this is the finished look. This is what her hair like look, look like after we gave her a beautiful, nice chop, a blunt bob. And this is what her front money piece looked like with the underlight. She was so 
happy. I was so ecstatic that her hair was able to get nice and light. And honestly, guys, when this fades out, it's just going to fade out into a beautiful ash blonde. And she can just maintain the gray silver tone with some Barcelona purple shampoo in between her visits. Alrighty guys, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in. And as always, I will talk to you guys next week.